until the word of God that you have heard, until it leaves your human spirit with all of the character of God. It doesn't matter how many times you've heard it. If that word has not left your human spirit with all of the character of God, if it has not given your mind the culture of truth, you should not cease to meditate it. You should not cease to hear it. And do not forget this. Until faith has achieved its highest objective, you must not stop to feed your faith. And to feed your faith, you will have to keep hearing the truth again and again. Faith comes by hearing. The more you hear it, the more you understand it. The more you understand it, the more the faith that's born on your inside. There are different types of faith. There is weak faith and there is strong faith. There is little faith and there is great faith. You see, the kind of faith you exhibit depends on your understanding of the information at your disposal. A truth that hasn't given the culture of truth to your mind should not be archived, should not be kept aside. So, this is what you have to learn to do right now. Learn to crave a truth that you heard that has not shaped your spirit. Learn to crave it. The Bible tells us, blessed are those that hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. How much God satisfies you depends on how much you hunger for the truth. So never set the truth aside because you've heard it before. There are those who have read the Bible many times, they keep reading it. You know why? The word of God is that manner that's ever fresh. It never grows stale. And you see, the amount of revelation you have of the word of God is what determines the kind of life you live. We have been called to rest. Our rest is tied to our revelation until a truth has formed the revelation. A revelation that has become a consciousness. You don't stop to listen to it. And so I challenge you to learn the word. You see, you, you are supposed to hear the word of God, a message again and again until you start living out the message. Because we become what we hear through practice. As if we have not become what we've heard, then we have to go back to hear it again until we become what we hear. And so let's, let's, let's become hungry for a truth until it forms the character of the Spirit. Until it brings us to an environment of truth where we can't live without it. Make that a habit for yourself. It's a choice you have to make. It's a choice you have to make. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Let me say something. I'm addressing some persons here. You know, Rebbe Tommy happens to be somebody God blessed before he brought children to him. For that reason, I have no reason to say something God didn't tell me. <laughs> Listen carefully. Because many times you find people do things to get money. I'm so blessed that I don't touch Naira. I don't. What I'm trying to say is this. There is nothing I tell you to get anything from it. <laughs> are, you, are you getting it? I, I, it's so, it's, I tell you because it is so. Nothing I tell you to get anything from. If we're not, so I won't tell you. Let me tell you what led to this. Why I was fellowship with the Lord. I said, Lord, let the blood of Jesus Christ speak very loud for me and my children. Let, listen, I said, let it speak louder than it's been speaking because the Bible tells us the blood speaks. And I said, Lord, as he's speaking, let the angels be angered to destroy the things that are not of your perfect plan, purpose, pleasure, grace for our lives. As he speaks, let the angels be provoked. 
Bible says the angels threw Satan out of heaven by the blood of the Lamb. So when the blood speaks, angels are charged. So I said, let this speak. I started praying with it while I was getting ready. As I was putting on my shoes, I said, Lord, honor me today. And the only way God can honor me right now is to bless my children. So, as I was coming out, I felt in my spirit there is something more. So when I said, uh, when I was singing this song, I was singing just here and there song, the only thing that was on my mind was, one more Lord, more blessing, something more, something more. Even if you have done more Lord, God is always room for more. So those words I have just spoken to you, not one will fall to the ground. You know why? Because they were spoken from a spirit that is desperately needing miracles for his children. Not from a lip needing assistance. Do you understand that now? Because there are those who make merchandise of people. But have passed that level. I'm at another level I can't mention in meeting. Do you understand that? God has, you know when the Bible says God has blessed Abraham. That's the level I'm operating from. God has blessed me so much that I can't say it in the open. So if I give you a word, you can run with it. It's coming from the throne. Because while I was talking to you guys, I saw heaven and God was writing to approve things. You know when a man is approving things, I saw in a vision things have been approved. I'm telling you, things have been approved with such urgency. When you guys lifted hands, I, I felt in my spirit angels worshiping along. Remember this. We didn't force God to tell us that he has called us for the never before seen. We didn't force God to tell us that our life is being reset. That is reset in our lives. That prophecy, we're going to leave it for days for everyone to read. Reset. And one of the ways to do that reset is through these prophecies that are coming. The prophecies will make you into the things God wants to do and then nobody will be able to say by the strength of my hand that became prophecies will make you. I read about Israel to you where it says, Happy are thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, who is the son of thy excellency. Your enemies shall be found liars unto thee and thou shalt ride upon the high places. When I read that to you, I was in it was God showing you how nations and people can be made by prophecies. Prophecies. The mind of God, you couldn't know any other way. That's what is happening right now. So, I saw on your foreheads, blessings written. I've never had that vision before. Blessings. Blessings. And by the Spirit of God, the blessings are activated right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I would just lift your hands towards heaven. And just bless him. For this that he has done. For all you have done for us. We are grateful, oh Lord. Just thank you. I give you praise, oh God. Thank you so much, Lord. I couldn't have asked for any better. I could have asked for more, but I am so grateful. Oh, thank you so much. My life is taking up a new meaning. My life is taking a new level, a new level of greatness, a new level of success, a new level of victory. Nations will serve the Lord because of me. I will be the same again. Your name shall be glorified. God shall be honored in all the earth. Because of my blessings, I give you praise. I love you. I honor you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus. What can we do to show our gratitude other than to pursue the kingdom like never before? Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want us to just honor the Lord. Offerings. 
thank you so much, Lord, for the honor you have given to us. Go ahead and take your offerings for the privilege to honor you. I thank you for everything. Lord, we ask that your anointing rest the offerings. Let the Holy Ghost overshadow our offerings. Let the power of the highest overshadow our offerings. And let come back to us in hundredfold. Press down, shake together, running over. We love you so much, Lord. We love you so much, Lord. Blessed be your praise. Blessed be your glory. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I must be honest with you guys. I just feel very humbled by God. Humbled by God. Humbled by God. And let me advise you. Don't let the wrong things entice you. If you stay faithful to God, you will help them in more than enough measure. Do not let the wrong things entice you. If you will stay faithful to God, you will have them in more than enough measure or measures. So don't, don't let the, the wrong things of life be your, your motivation. Just stay faithful to God. I'll show you something in, the, in just a moment. We're done giving our offerings. Hallelujah. And these things that I'm telling you, do not let them fall to the ground. Don't let them fall to the ground. I got a, 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 a report this morning of someone's mother in this place who entered into a building to drop some items that she says. After she dropped the items, walked out of the building, the building collapsed. And she would have been in tears now that the mom is gone. The father, who is a Muslim, called to say, now nah, I know. <laughs> Listen, the mother would have been dead today, this morning. I've just been dead. I know there are those who are having issues who say, God did down for her. Why did God not do my own? Let me say this so people don't understand, but hear me. God's commitment to us is to the measure we are committed to him. People don't know this. He said, how can you say that? God is not a man. You shut up. Your kind of selfish mind wants God to be everything to you while you are nothing to him. It doesn't work like that, my brother. He has saved you. Is that not enough? He gave his son for you. What have you given back? That's what we want. Let God be everything to me, even when I'm stupid. It doesn't, you are going to be more disappointed if that's how your mind works. It doesn't work like that. Just go and read your Bible. He said to the upright, I will show myself upright. I can show you. No, no, because people just feel, even if I'm stupid, let God be great to me. Eh, where does that work? because he's God. No. He is not a foolish God. He's a God of principles. If, the, if he didn't have principles, then he would not have been good enough to be called God. I mean, a God should have principles so you can predict some things about God. Many of you just want to be useless. Why God is good to me? It doesn't work like that. If you are, if you are feeling terrible because something happened to your, to your loved one, go and check. Go and check. If that person if that person became God to you, if, if 
Go check if you place that person above your God. People don't understand this. The God we call on, one of his names is Jealous. He says, my name is Jealous. That means he will come after that thing that has taken his place in your life. Not God himself that will do it. He will take off his hand and the devil that will be waiting since we have our sex. You can get angry. Your anger will not change God. Your anger will only lead you to hell. He says, he says, don't be foolish. The wrath of man does not work God's righteousness. Did you read about the man who would not let church expand because he wanted to beat the house to his two daughters? He said they should hold, put church on hold. That new, new converts should find where to serve God because he didn't want to give. He was one of the highest givers. He said, church is full, church is full. Pastor said, we want to break down the walls and expand. The man said, no, those converts that are coming in, they, they don't have space. Let him go to another church. Why? Because he was building the house for his two daughters. He didn't want anybody, any project to interfere. So when he finished building, days before launching to, to hand over the keys to the daughters, a car knocked two of them down and they died. On his knees, weeping, and he looked and said, Oh God. And God said, Remember my project you forgot. Go and read your Bible if it's not there. It's there in your Bible. He said, my house is leaky and you stay in a house that is full. Look at David, look at Solomon. Want to build God's house first. You think God, God will be, you think, we think God will be benevolent to our selfishness. It doesn't work like that. That's what we think. Even if you are stupid, God, you are God now. She said, God spared that mother. Why didn't God spare my uncle? I don't know. You can take, collect transport and ask him. No, 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 I'm telling you. People don't learn. They think, they think God is one native doctor with no principles. Hallelujah. And, and if the things I just said now will not make you feel like that, I don't want to continue. Listen, God is your only refuge from the end of the devil. If you walk away, you are dead. For your own good, stay and repent. Stop getting angry because you won't survive it. Learn from your mistakes and, let, and, and, and make sure you don't repeat the same again. Learn from it. Learn from it. Humans are careless. Humans are careless. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So when I give you a word of prophecy, run with it. Why? Because you're, you're not paying me for it. You can't even pay me for it. And I don't need it. So when I give you prophecy, run with it, take it and jump with it. Believe it. Because whether you like it or not, it will certainly come to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory to God. Holy Spirit, we are grateful. So let us honor the love first. Something is written on your foreheads now. Blessings. 
So everywhere you go, that's what people will see. That's what the angels will be seeing. What do you think God is trying to achieve through us? Return us back to his regent, kings. That's all. So it is from kings to stage. So that from stage back to king. It's so simple. I will explain in a moment. God is not looking for anything. Remember, he could have done without you. He could have explained to you the case of the natural man. He has no hope. The hope of the natural man is your mercy. You don't know that? The hope of the natural man is your mercy. In your mercy, you will reach out to him and he will, he will be saved. So the natural man is at the mercy of your life. Even Israel, the Bible tells us, for the mercy of the Gentiles, Israel shall find salvation. Read your Bible. We don't know these things. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some beautiful things to read. <laughs> beautiful things to read. You know. Beautiful words. Let's bless it. Are you ready to give your offerings? All right. Oh, yes. Let's give our offerings. Lord, I live by your word. I'm like a tree. I am the tree by the stream. My leaves are green and I bear fruits in all seasons. Hallelujah. Let me, let me, let me say these things to you. You don't get distracted by Killing your nails, looking, just listen to me, listen carefully. When God, just listen first, just listen first, look up and listen first, please. God is a spirit. He lives in the spirit realm. When he speaks, it is settled in the spirit realms. That word will need a man in the physical realm to confirm it, call it forth to come to pass. If the man does not believe, even if you say it, it will not happen. People don't know how these things really work. Let me show you. Book of Psalms. You need to see it. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Are you here? Okay. Because people just think, but I thought he is God. If you just say it and let it happen, that's what we wish. But that's not how it happens.
Psalms 119. Are you there? Verse 89. Now, you know, for, for, for a moment, what, what, how do people who are not here, who are out there for whatever reason, how are they going to relate what I just said now? Because they are going to live here with the prophecy on their lives. And that's all they know. And if it doesn't happen, they start doubting. And Bible tells them, what if some do not believe? It doesn't mean anything to God. If you don't believe, it's your loss. Why wouldn't they believe? Because they don't know how to use it. So if it doesn't prosper, they start thinking otherwise. Why? Because when, they were, when the teacher was going on how to use it, they were not there. It's, it's something that people don't understand. There are things that many of you don't, don't, don't consider as important. One information, one letter can be a reason you missed everything. Have you not read your Bible? Have you not read histories and all that? Some days ago, um, an aircraft operated by certain airline, let me respect the integrity, okay, not in Nigeria anyway, um, but landing in one of the airports, and the pilot announced that the, the brake system is having a little, a little issue. Therefore, um, he will have to, they may have to be an emergency landing. And before he does that, he had to keep um, um, circulating the air to burn out the fuel first in case of explosion. Finally, they landed safely after everything because the air, you know, it's not Nigerian. So they already braced for the worst and thankfully, and God being braced, landed safely and everybody was evacuated. Some gave a testimony. What was the reason? The plane didn't break. The wings didn't break. And it didn't break. It was a tiny thing that was wrong with that massive aircraft. Your life is like that massive aircraft. One information could be a reason why you never became anything in life. People don't know these things. Bible says the little foxes, not the major things. The little foxes spoil divine. There are those of you, meeting is going on, you are sleeping. Somebody out of kindness tries to wake you up, you get angry. You don't understand how life works. How much did Esau lose his destiny for? A muscle of food. A muscle of food. If you want to remain in Christ and be fruitless, then be anyhow you want. If you want to remain in Christ and suffer the things Natural men suffer. Remain the way you are. That's all. You don't need anything. You don't need to do anything for that kind of life. Just remain the way you are. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. But if you want to make great progress in Christ, then you must observe the principles of God's word. You want to make great progress in Christ, then you must learn to observe the principles of God's word. You know, the shameful thing is this. I know a, large, a great number of people in Christ who are stagnant and are not motivated to do what we are telling them. Look at your life. What is that spectacular thing that has happened in your life and then they bring you imagine you can come to a doctor over the same thing the man will even get tired next thing they want to refer you what does it take to make progress in Christ it takes the things I'm teaching you that's all
Hallelujah. Are you done? Okay. So get back to it now. Oh boy. Want to read? <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where do we live? <laughs> that world that set in heaven can be resisted from happening on earth until a man does something. Who don't know that one? Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. And where does God speak from? Heaven. So God in heaven speaks over your life from heaven. And that word is settled in heaven. For it to happen on earth is what you must do. That's what people don't know. That's the knowledge they lack. Why they find that their lives are stagnant and they're and they unproductive and are angry. A pastor told me that uh, so and so will happen. It didn't happen. A pastor told you. Isaiah told Jesus before he was born, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. He has anointed me to set the captives free. Elijah, um, God told Isaiah, Isaiah said it. Many years later, Jesus was born and said, this that Isaiah said is about me. And the next thing, Jesus is throwing for it to be happening. No. Next thing, the man went to the wilderness to go and pray. To give expression to thus says the Lord. The Bible tells you he returned in the power of the Spirit. Be deceiving yourself. You can die with the blessings without eating the fruits. Because the blessing is an invisible, divine endowment. The invisible divine endowment that enables a man to prosper in whatever he or she does. The invisible divine endowment that enables a man to prosper in whatever he or she does. It brings in prosperity. It brings in prosperity. It brings in prosperity. It opens doors. It opens doors. It commands unusual favor. It inspires ideas. It provides motivation to act. It provides motivation to act. Hmm? In the direction of all his provisions. In the direction of all his provisions. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Together. For example, God speaks to this man to bless me because he has put his blessing on me. Right? And the man has his substance that the blessing can provide. The blessing will motivate me to talk to him. If I don't talk to him, nothing happens. Because the blessing must be triggered for it to produce natural results.
Sometimes pride can stand the way of the blessing. Pride. What are things that hinder the blessing? Pride. Ignorance. Sin. Laziness. You understand? Pride, ignorance, sin, laziness. It tells you the hand of the diligent shall be a rule. But the slothful shall be under tribute. Hallelujah. You still here? Okay. Just want to make sure you you are not deceived. Anytime you say, Well, if God wants to bless me, he should bless me. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1. To verse 10. All right, I want you guys to look at everybody. I want you to actually be reading it while I explain when it's necessary. Is that okay? Yes, want to read. Now, hold on. This can be a mass situation. All right? So it can be that financially, the family is very dry. Spiritually, the family is very dry. It, this is, um, it's symbolic in many sense. In many sense. And it has application to practically any area of life, these things. It can be a mass situation. It can be your, your spiritual life that is very dry. Your prayer life that is very dry. Your finances that is very dry. You can't come to the good Lord nation. Listen, this is not any other ministry. This is the good Lord nation that has been called of God to be the mirror of how God should be saved. How God should be followed. How a child of God should be like. There is no place we've been to that we don't stand out. Yes, Except for those who are just unnecessarily jealous. Who say things. They say because we don't adopt their methods. Far be it from me. You know, a, a, a man of God once said, I can copy any, any concept he has. And I said... I'm not inspired by anything you do. And it felt like it was pride. How can I copy a concept for the never before seen? How? Let's suppose I copy Pastor Chris, for example. Where will I apply it? Because what I am called to do has never existed. Imagine telling a man to take spare tire you don't use again for a type of car that he doesn't even know how it looks like. It won't fit. And if he refuses to take it, you say he's proud. He's proud. He doesn't want help. What are you talking about? What are you saying? And because they are getting some results, they feel that they've gone ahead. Ahead of who? Well, we're caught together. And the funny thing about it is that what they are doing now at their so-called high level, I'm doing more. There is no amount they have sown at their high level they have not sown. There's no encounter with God they've had at their so-called level have not had.
If your inspiration is not my aspiration, does that make me a proud person? No. Ridiculous. But let's move past that now and focus on what's important. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. I told you how the we 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 mirror as it were the Rechabites, to, just like they were to the Israelites, so are we to the body of Christ, even though we are members of it. We reflect how it ought to be. And you know, sisters come to church with almost half of the breasts exposed, and then I and I react towards it like, I don't think it's right. Unless they say the things you are doing are off. How? A top singer is carrying dreads up and down, and I'm like, come on, let's see things are doing are off. How? 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 You see, when, when you become a threat to people, they try to talk you down. Yes, Hallelujah. You still here? No, I'm taking you, I'm taking you somewhere. Because in the moment we're going to have a diagram I summarized um, everything. I, I gave birth to children who are never tired of, of having God. Who are hungry for more. But, but you are going back to the house you have been living in for how many years? What change have you effected? Don't be a ridiculous child of God. Of course, I don't have the temptation of extending anything, that you should at least wait to hear what I'm trying to say. Rather than Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus what? Jesus said, I want to extend it. I won't even do it. But isn't, isn't that a shame? You know, God can even use this as a test of who you really are. God can tell you, give me what you have, which he doesn't even need. Was it not the test that made Abraham what he became? You think God needed Isaac? He said, give me thy son, thine only son, Isaac. And Abraham took Isaac to offer. God said, I don't need Isaac. I just wanted to prove you, to know if you really trust me. And that was all. That was all. He didn't need Isaac just to test Abraham's heart. The Bible tells us, who can know the, man, the heart of man? God tested Abraham. He did it with Israelites and they all perished. But they failed. Moses said he took you to the wilderness to prove you to know what was in your heart. after me right now. Oh Lord God, I believe that you love me and that you offered your son Jesus Christ in my stead who was offered for my offenses and was raised back to life for my justification. Today, I ask for the Lord Jesus to be my savior. I ask for the remission of sins of my soul. I ask for eternal life of my spirit. And by faith, I receive the remission of sins in my soul 
I receive eternal life from my spirit and I declare I am born again. I declare the life of God is coming to my spirit. I declare I now belong in the family of God. And so I ask you, Father, go and repeat after me. Come and place your mark of ownership on me by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, today I become a member of the family of God. I ask for your presence into my life with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name, I'm born again. I have eternal life and I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name. Amen. You pray that prayer, open your mouth right now and pray with me in the spirit because you have just been baptized of the Holy Ghost right now. So how do I know? Psalms 81 verse 10, it says, open your mouth wide and I'll feel it. So the rest of you pray with me just in 60 seconds. Amen. <laughs> I capate la gloria perisato, Ibragina sacradi, meredose frokitaba, rabashi cabela endo cobra iracata, labroco rabacashi, beredidi poso freke dele manda crista, rabababababocoso, in the name of Jesus. A prophecy for the year. Are you ready? There will be fears in societies. The economy of nations will sink deeper. He said, but know for sure that I'm your prosperity. Success will not be a difficult thing for those that will walk by my spirit this year. For I will make a difference by causing your light to shine brighter. So we have the prophecy for the nations, right? Economy will sink deeper. He said, but don't be afraid, I'm your prosperity. Don't forget that. The Lord is blessing you. And listen, life will work for you. No, 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 listen. Just listen, I mean it. I mean it. You are going to live with the capacity of the Spirit for fixing life. That's what the Lord has said. First says the Lord to you, you are living with the capacity of the spirit for facing life. So life will work for you. Because you are living with the capacity of the Holy Ghost for facing life.